Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give you guys a quick rundown of the UI Toolkit, which is a newer way of building GUI elements inside of Unity. So we're just going to go ahead and get started by creating a brand new 3D core project inside of Unity. So inside of our starter scene, I'm going to start by making sure that we have a canvas and an event system added in so that we can respond to UI things like clicks. Let's go ahead and right click in the hierarchy, go down to UI, and then we will do event system down here. And then I'll right click, go down to UI again, and let's add in a canvas. So the canvas is basically where we can port all of our 2D UI elements. Let's change this to 2D view so that we're looking right at the canvas rather than our main game scene. So to build our UI with the toolkit, we're going to need to create a UI document. I'm going to set this up in the assets folder to start. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to create folder. I'll just call this the UI folder for right now. Double click into it. Let's right click in the project, go to create. And down here at the bottom, we have UI toolkit. So I'm going to choose UI document from the set. And I'll rename this to be, let's say UI base. So you'll see that this is a visual tree asset. We can open it up for editing by double clicking on it, or we could go to window UI toolkit and then UI builder. So double clicking on this will automatically open up the UI builder. So I suppose I'll put this right next to the game view, drag and drop. So here we're basically looking at the layout for our UI document. So just like the scene has a hierarchy, our visual tree also has a hierarchy. Now, it's important to note that the elements we add in here are not game objects as other objects in the scene would be. They're their own separate thing. They're visual tree elements. So if I drag a visual element onto the hierarchy here, then just like you might expect, this is now a child of the parent container. Let's expand this a little bit over here. And having this visual element selected, you can see that there are a whole bunch of properties that we can edit over on the right about this element. So almost exactly like if you were doing web development, you have style sheets inside of the UI builder that you can use to target classes or other identifiers uh, for the different elements on your UI document. So to create a style sheet up here at the top left in UI builder, let's create a new USS. So it's not a CSS like it would be in web development, but it's you, I believe, for Unity style sheet. Let's go ahead and create that in our UI folder. I'll call this base UI .uss, save and add. And now we can grab the different elements on our document and give them classes if we want them to adopt certain properties that we define in our style sheet. Uh, for a more workable example, so that it's really clear, let's add a label beneath our visual element. Uh, so the visual element container, as in our main UI document container. So this gives it a name, and later we can target it by the name container as well. But let's drag in the label here, beneath here. So it's the label at the top of the container. I'm going to change the text to say test title. And now let's create a class property which we can use to target this title and anything else that we would define as a header inside of our base UI. So I am going to create a custom class here. Let's do dot header. And I'm going to add style class to list. So now double click here. And that's going to add it to our USS document as something we can target and edit. If we were to open up the USS file, you can see inside of there that it's already written the code header. And then in here we have this styling properties, none yet. So let's in the UI builder, click on header once again. And then let's create a custom color style for anything that is a header. Also, Quick note, if you hover over it, you can see any elements that are using that uh, class currently. So it's a very helpful visual identifier. So let's change the color here to something like red or orange. If I change that over here, you'll see that the elements in the document, the label here with that class immediately update. I'm going to control S to save this. If we look at Visual Studio, we can see that the USS file has been updated. So here is the code representation of whatever we're doing inside of the UI builder. And just so you know, you can go back and forth. So if you want to manually type in a style here, something like, uh, let's see, font size, then we could type in 30 pixels here, hit control S, go back over here, and you'll see that it updates in the editor as well. So anything that has the header class is now uh, size 30. So now how do we take this UI document and actually make it visible inside of the game? So let's go back to scene view. 
on the canvas, I am going to click in here. So looking at the scene view and the hierarchy, what we need is something in our canvas to have a UI document uh, component. So we could put that directly on the canvas. I'm going to actually just create a child game object. So let's create an empty and I'll say main UI here. Add a component UI document. So you'll see here that we need to create a panel settings asset. So let's right click on our UI area, go to create UI toolkit and then panel settings asset. So these are the settings that will apply to your UI documents. One to note here is scale mode, where you can see it's constant physical size. If you want your UI to automatically scale with your screen size, you can just change it here, scale with screen size. And then that will mean that as your screen size goes smaller or bigger, your UI will just scale with it, which is very helpful. Okay, anyway, we have our panel settings. Let's just rename it here and I'll call it main panel settings in the UI. Let's go to the main UI object in our scene. I'm going to drag the panel settings into here. And then we need the visual tree asset. I'll click here, type in base UI or UI base, and just select that. You can also just drag and drop the visual tree asset into here if you want. And now as long as this UI document is enabled, when we hit play, it should pop up on the screen. So you can see our UI is displaying here. So if we exit out of play mode and I turn off the enable for the UI document, we hit play again then you'll see it doesn't appear here. If we happen to toggle this on and off during gameplay, it's going to completely reset whatever was in the UI document before and regenerate a new copy of the UI document uh, when we re-enable it. So that's something we could do in code. Now, to create something that's a little bit more functional in game, let's create a button. So this time I'll actually create it as a second UI document, which will be loaded on top of the first one automatically. So let's create a new child game object here from the main UI. And I'll just call this button UI. Let's add a new UI document component. And you'll see immediately that this becomes a child of the main UI because this is further down the hierarchy. So it is using the main panel settings uh, from the main UI. And, the, and it references the parent UI document where this new source asset will be loaded on top of. So we can just create a new visual tree asset in our UI. I'll right click, go to create UI toolkit, UI document. And I'll just call this button UI. And I'll double click into it. And let's add a button here. So I'll just find the controls button, drag that in as the root here. And yeah, we can basically just leave it like that, I guess. Just keep it simple. Okay, and now we want to take the button UI and I'll just drag that into source asset. Let's make sure that everything is enabled and we can go ahead and hit play. And we should see the button UI loaded somewhere on top of the main UI. So these are actually two separate UI documents, but the button just gets loaded underneath as a child of the parent. And we can kind of test what's going on here by going to window UI toolkit. I believe it's debugger here. And if we pick an element and then click on the screen, we'll be able to see the layout that's going on here. So we have the main UI container. We have the visual element we created under it, which is called container, but really it's a container within a container. And then we have the text label. So the other child here is that new UI we just created, the template container, hashtag button UI container. It has a button inside of it, but it's really important here to note that this is a child of the main UI. So just keep that in mind. Now, if we were to click the button, you can obviously click on it, but it's not going to do anything. We would need to subscribe to a click event so that whenever we click on the button, something will happen. So let's create some code. I'll do it as a new script under button UI, and we'll target that button, and then we'll make some debug log happen whenever that button gets clicked on. So I'm going to create a new script here. Let's call this button clicker, I suppose. And let's edit that script. So what we're going to need from our button clicker script is sometime around on enable for our mono behavior. We want to get reference to the UI document that is storing our button. And inside of that, we want to pick out the button, which we can query by name in order to find. And then we can give it a callback whenever it's clicked on so that we can actually run some code on it. So let's add in at the top UI document. And I'll call this button document. 
or a button UI, something like that. If we look at the inspector, we can see that we're putting the button clicker script right next to the UI document. So we can just do get component on the game object to find this UI document. So I'm going to do button document equals get component UI document. And I'll just do a quick check to make sure that's not null before I go on for other things. So if button document is null, I'll just debug log and error and say no button document found. Otherwise, we can use it for querying the button inside of the UI document. So we'll have a button up here, a button UI button, and we'll do UI button equals button document dot, uh, let's see, root visual element. So in order to query things that are inside of the document, you want to get the root and then drill down to find the items. So this is the root of the button document, not the root of the main UI. Keep that in mind. And then when we have the root visual element, we can do a dot Q for query. And we can just do a quick query by name. So I am going to find the element called test button. And this will return a visual element. But we can just get the visual element as the type we would expect. So I'll do as a button. So we're representing the visual element as a button. And a button will just inherit from visual element as the root class for things in your UI document. OK, so now we just need to make sure there's actually a button with the name test button for this to work. So let's go back to the UI builder. We have the button. Let's just paste in the name there. OK, and that's really all we need. So we should be able to find that. And let's say if UI button does not equal null, we'll just do a quick debug log button found. So back in the scene hierarchy, both of the UI documents are enabled. The button clicker script is enabled. So the unenable function should run as soon as the game loads, basically. So let's go ahead and hit play. And if we look in the console, we can see that we found this button successfully by querying it by its name. So now that we have that button referenced, we can subscribe to a click event that occurs on the button and then give it a callback. So UI button dot... Uh, let's see, register callback, I believe it is. We need to give it the event type. So we're looking for a click event. And then let's give it a callback function to use. So I could call this just on button click. So obviously we haven't created a function here, which will take a click event as a parameter. So let's create that public void on button click, which is going to take a click event as the callback parameter. I'll call it EVT for event. And yep, there we have that. So whenever our button is clicked on, now it is going to run this function. So let's do a debug log. And I'm going to say that the UI button has been clicked on. So with that, we can get rid of this extra start update methods. We don't need that. And we can just go ahead and give it a test. So let's go back out here, hit play. So we have the button found down here, and it should have registered the click event onto the button. So let's click on the button a few times and you can see each time the UI button has been clicked on is successfully running. Okay, so that is basically a really quick introduction to UI toolkit and how you can start building a UI for your game by building out your UI in the UI builder, adding in some style sheet classes, and then interacting with your UI with code that references the UI documents that you create to represent the UI. So I've been Chris. I hope this was a helpful, quick introduction into the UI Builder system. Thanks for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future Unity content.